pleasant to us, no? So, small audience or big audience, the show must go on. And uh, as part of uh, the product uh, agreement, I have to present this paper I presented in uh, Santa Ana, California last uh, April. Anyway, so the topic is about human ecology education for development and sustainability in the College of Human Ecology at the University of Indonesia's Banyos. And my co-authors in this paper are the former, uh, is the former dean, so uh, is a Sanihi, uh, my associate dean, uh, Maria Melinda T. Mendoza, uh, faculty members Jennifer Maria Samparo and Carla Edith G. Mena. And this is a paper uh, actually presented as part of the CML Sharka Travel Grant Award for the 21st Society for Human Ecology International Conference held at Santa Ana, California, USA, last April 11, 15, uh, 2016. And uh, very much grateful to uh, Dr. Kadis here, it's also instrumental, also in the thing, trying to give the grant <laughs> as part of the evaluation team. So this is a uh, a uh, paper that was uh, read and uh, presented in Santa Ana, California for the Society of Human Ecology at the 21st International Conference. And mind you, uh, this coming year, November, uh, November 2017, the uh, UPLB will be hosting the 22nd Society for Human Ecology Conference. And here, that will be again top to support this uh, major activity. I would like to uh, begin with trying to uh, expound on the history of human ecology in Southeast Asia and uh, particularly in the Philippines in the next uh, slides. So there were seven uh, Southeast Asian universities based in Japan, Korea, Malaysia, and Philippines which offered this so-called human ecology program. And uh, just last month I was here also in Indonesia. Uh, it was also offered in the uh, Institute of Tanya Bogor wherein there is the faculty of human ecology here there. So I was invited to also in the celebration of the 11th anniversary foundation of that uh, human ecology institution. So I also I gave them an idea of what human ecology is here in uh, UP Los Baños. And mostly these uh, human ecology institutions in Southeast Asia, also in the Philippines, started uh, based on uh, mostly agricultural colleges and universities of higher education institutions established by the central government. And one of these is uh, UP uh, system and then UP Los Banos in particular. So let me give you a history of this human ecology in Southeast Asia and the Philippines with uh, some background. Uh, I don't know whether uh, many of you know this, that the human ecology actually in UP Los Banos started as from the uh, Department of Home Economics or Home Technology especially here in UP Los Banos, under the College of Agriculture there. Because there were two colleges existing there, the College of Agriculture and the College of Forestry. So the College of the Department of Home Technology is under the College of Agriculture there. So also in some uh, parts of Asia, also institutions, uh, actually these uh, agricultural institutions offer the same home economics uh, program which later on developed into the so-called human ecology program. Actually in UPLB, uh, as I've said, the Department of Home Technology was offered in UPLB in 1955. Uh, at the time, to pay women, particularly, particularly as partners of men in agricultural and rural development. And this was according to the paper of uh, Dr. Bernardo in 2007. And the development of human ecology education has been part of the organization agenda of most universities. And uh, as I've said, University of Putra, Malaysia, which I happened to uh, have as a, also a co-participant uh, last month, uh, last, week, uh, last month, yes, in Bogor, was also there. Uh, and uh, she is very much also interested in trying to have some collaboration with uh, this Bertani Bogor and UP Los Banos in the area of human ecology. So also in the of Los Banos. And in 1974, the Institute of Human Ecology in UPLB was established. And this was a time, and we have to, uh, have to be thankful to the founding father of human ecology, uh, former deputy director of CIRCA, which is 
pues uh, doctor y el salido señor nada de un señor former deputy director here and the main objective of uh, the institute then was to further integrate and unify all disciplines and this is a gargantuan uh, task trying to unify all disciplines within the university it's not uh, it's almost the university in general but uh, it was further uh, uh, simplified and then also to enable the university to play or serve a functional role within the UP system and also in the country in general and also to exert a more solid impact in national development as uh, stated in the paper of the, Thor, or the former dean we said here in 1983 so what is human ecology in UPLD or in UP Spaniards? So UP, uh, UPLB is the first in Asia and second in the world to offer the degree program in human ecology in 1974 during the time of Dean uh, El Sagigin Senior. And raising the development of the human ecology, the Philippines provide a valuable insight in the Southeast Asian context. I don't know whether uh, uh, actually uh, the first in Asia to offer the degree program in some universities in Indonesia and Malaysia uh, also pattern their programs and even their organization uh, from the UP Los Baños Human Ecology. So, as I said, uh, the college uh, started from an institute in 1974 and became a college in 1983. And the degree program, the BS Human Ecology, before under the Institute of Human Ecology, under Dean uh, Hilsen Ingrid Senior, then we call the department operational area so there was no department there they are all uh, called operational areas uh, those are the resource technology management environmental planning and analysis human development and population studies development education and community services and the human nutrition and food and then when it uh, became a college in 1983 again uh, with the BS Human Ecology degree program there was an addition of the BS nutrition program. So the department, uh, there were, uh, there are three departments established from the different operational areas and one institute. So these are the Department of Community and Environmental Resource Planning, which I belong to, the Department of Human and Public Development Studies, the Department of Social Development Services, and the Institute of Human Nutrition and Food. And our, uh, the reasons for the establishment of the Institute of Human Ecology in UP Los Baños was a response to the call of the Stockholm Conference in 1972 for a common outlook and principle to inspire and guide the people and the world in the preservation and enhancement of human environment. So, uh, Dean, uh, the former Dean Hill Sagin Senior saw this uh, whole thing and established the so-called Institute of Human Ecology in 1974. So it was a response to the UN uh, conference. And the need for UPLB program that dealt with the whole scope of human and environment relations. This is the whole gamut of uh, the things that we are doing in the college, wherein we try to see the relations between human beings, even the activities, and the environment uh, relationship. So, this, uh, I call the BS Human Ecology program is not uh, so popular among the students, but it is gaining uh, grounds now that we have attracted, uh, actually, presently we have more than 600 uh, students under the College of Human Ecology. So, it has a vision, the College has a vision of the development of human centered, self reliant, ecologically stable communities to support the national goals. And that is supported by the mission of to advance the body of knowledge in human ecology to improve operational capabilities and strengthen functional commitment in the area of human nutrition, human and family development, community and environmental resource planning, as well as the social development. Okay. So these are the departments and the institute. Uh, this are, or the community and environmental resource planning, uh, this is uh, the whole trust of this department. Sustainable development of human settlements with a view to avoid adverse effects on the environment and obtain maximum social, economic, and environmental benefits. While the Human and Family Development Studies Department 
is uh, the trust is the development of human beings and the family as a basic institution for human welfare. The third department, the social development services, has the development and management of social organizations and institutions to promote economic productivity, social development, and economic well-being. And lastly, the Institute of Human Nutrition and Food, uh, whose trust is the promotion of human health and well-being through proper nutrition and enhancement of social economic conditions. So, uh, let me uh, uh, share you the focus of the, the academic trust of the College of Human Ecology in terms of the logos, the focus, the trust, and the nexus. So, we have the following logos. Uh, individual, the family, the community, and the settlement in general. And the focus of each of these would be in human nutrition and food, human development, social organizations, and human settlements. And then uh, the trust involve those uh, things related to the different foci. And I've not discussed more on the trust because somehow this has been uh, presented also in the uh, anyway. Let me uh, just uh, uh, some few seconds to discuss this. Uh, under the human nutrition uh, focus, uh, the functional foods, food safety, lifestyle related diseases, clinical nutrition, nutrition intervention, ecology of food and nutrition. So we can see that there are several areas uh, being uh, studied under the human nutrition aspect. So, uh, the human development uh, focus, we have the child development, adolescent development, adult and elderly, family resource management, and family dynamics. So this, you can see under the human development, this is from the womb to tomb uh, type of uh, uh, trust in terms of the instruction and research or public service also under that uh, human development. Under the social organizations, we have capability building, empowering social organization, social impact of development programs, innovative approaches, techniques in social development, and lastly, under the human settlements, we have focus on the largest planning, settlements planning of all the eco zones, lowland, coastal, upland, human settlements. And we can see the nexus in terms of uh, research and extension. So, you have human nutrition and health and human development across the lifespan, human capital, population dynamics, social development services, community environmental health, environmental justice and ethics, and human settlements planning, environmental design, as well as disaster management. So the whole nexus actually is not only focused on those things, but trying to have some overlap or overlaps among those different trust and focus and uh, locus. So what is the Bachelor of Science in Human Ecology? It's a four-year undergraduate program which aims to produce key professionals who can contribute to the improvement of human welfare. And we have three major programs. The Family Development, under the Human Family Development Studies. We have the Social Technology, under the Social Development Services, and the Human Settlements Planning, under the uh, Community and Environmental Resource Planning Department. So, you can see this, uh, based on this uh, major areas of specialization, Family development will focus on the development of the individuals and families as they transact, relate, and adapt to the environment. While the social technology major focuses on the various social development services and is concerned with the tools and techniques of affecting self propelling communities and sustainable development. The human settlement planning major focuses on the design and implementation of plans which will ensure the long-term sustainability of community and environmental resources while providing optimum development benefits to rural and urban communities. So in 2008, we tried to re-examine the framework of the College of Human Ecology to uh, keep abreast with what is happening in the, the outside world. So this was started during the time of, uh, again, uh, former Dean Sunay Sasakikin, the doctor of the first dean. So in 2008, the series of works, a series of workshops and consultations were conducted to update the CHG framework for better understanding and appreciation of the interrelationship of the different departments. So the consultations were made not only within the college, among the students, but also among the alumni. So we have uh, to have a better grasp of what really 
human equality should be under the UP Los Banos uh, institution. So the CHC framework depicts uh, the overall goal of human equality. So later on, I'll show you the diagram. So environmental integrity, food and nutrition security, empowered social organizations and institutions, and developed human potentials. So this is the framework we developed in 2008 to depict all those uh, things we are trying to uh, have in the instruction, research, public service program. So we can see that in this diagram, all those uh, outlying uh, areas uh, have to talk, uh, talk about the focus, the trust of the different departments. So the human ecological system will try to include the interaction component of the human systems and the environment. Now the human systems try, uh, the environment trying to be the provider of the resources needed by the human systems and then the human systems will try to be the steward, caretaker of the environment. So and all its uh, different aspects. So the further uh, explain is the framework to vitalize the DC Matecology curriculum and it strengthen the thesis and the research options for the undergraduate students. Before we only have the practical or the field practice uh, component of uh, the so-called BS Human Ecology and also BS Nutrition, but we have uh, now tried to incorporate or introduce the thesis, the research option for these students who are interested in conducting research. Now the practicum is being implemented for eight weeks with partner development organizations and communities. So this is uh, as, uh, every semester we have some uh, students who are fielded for eight weeks in different communities. Uh, this month, uh, next month, October, we'll be building uh, two groups in Mindoro, in Upper De Hilo, and uh, another uh, town in uh, Mindoro, trying to help the communities also, not the local government units, and trying to devise or uh, update their profile and also the development plans. And also, uh, the framework established partnership, uh, we have established partnerships with regional development councils and departments like the DEI, this value in terms of research as well as uh, actual research and also public service activities. Now, let me just uh, give you a uh, education process sustainable development, uh, which enable the every human being to acquire the knowledge, skills, and attitude and values necessary to create a sustainable future based on the UNESCO 2015. So we have the social, environment, economic uh, sectors, and then we can see uh, in uh, the middle, we would like to, so, to have a sustainable kind of activities where this, there should be viable, equitable, as well as uh, bearable. So education for sustainable development also aims to achieve the full human potential individually as a member of a family, his or her society and community. And it also requires participatory teaching and learning methods that motivate and empower learners to critically think, change their behavior, and take actions in collaborative way on key development issues such as climate change, disaster risk reduction, biodiversity, poverty reduction, and sustainable development. And these things are we are the College of Human Ecology is trying to address these things in terms of its instruction, research, and public service program. Okay, in the BBPs under Agenda 21, this uh, so-called education process and sustainable development, it is served as a learning process in all levels and types of education that envisions better quality of life for our Filipinos through the development of a just, moral, creative, spiritual, economically vibrant, caring, diverse, yet cohesive society characterized by appropriate productivity, participatory and democratic processes, and living in harmony within the limits of the caring capacity of nature and integrity of creation. So from this statement alone, we can see that the Human Ecology, the of Human Ecology and its program is in line with the so-called Sustainable Development and the Agenda 21. 
So what are the core courses under the BSU Manicology vis-a-vis this is Education for Sustainable Development? We have identified some core courses which uh, try to have some significance under the Education for Sustainable Development. We have the Human Ecological Perspectives in Development, that is, we call it UMA 101. The Materials and Energy Flows, which is about, uh, uh, that is, SEP 11. Fundamentals of Human Settlements, which is SEP 31. Environmental Health, which is SEP 21. And Ecology and Value Systems, which is about, uh, which is UMA 102. I can still remember the number, the title of the course. I was a college secretary for 10 years, so I have to memorize all those uh, subjects. So, uh, in terms of significance, uh, those courses, uh, one by one, the human ecological perspectives in development teaches the student to analyze economic development problems, particularly those related to resource utilization, supports the economic and environment link in the design of intervention to achieve sustainable development. While the material and energy flows, with the matter of human settlements, the environmental health, uh, and ask the students to be more analytical regarding the different structure, functions, and other dimensions that shape a community. The ecology and value systems, the UMA 102, students are taught to analyze value orientation of man and societal groups, their role in dealing with environment, resources, other human groups, and institutions. So this is the one I'm uh, talking earlier about the supervised field experience, which is the U, uh, we call this UMA, Human Ecology 198, the field practical, super, supervised field experience or field practical. It's a culminating integrative course requirement of the Bachelor of Science degree in Human Ecology is taken by students in their senior year. And uh, we, students under this program cannot go on the practical without finishing all the courses even the physical education. So they have to finish everything before they can uh, go on the practical, or field practical. So that's why some students are uh, opting to do some research or thesis. If they have some other subjects left, uh, let's say BE or some other uh, courses on subjects, they can indulge on the thesis uh, option. So. The, uh, the, uh, the field practicum described as direct participation in ongoing planning process in a public or private field. The field practicum experience is in the, intended to provide some type of apprenticeship or pre-professional work experience. Because most of our graduates, after uh, having their field practicum in the local government units, most of them are being hired as planners or uh, the so-called uh, planning officers. Some private institutions, also the non-government organizations, they are trying to uh, employ our graduates. So these are some photos only of how this uh, field practice has been conducted with uh, very close supervision of faculty members. This one is from the Department of Community and Environmental Resource Planning. So uh, we have they conduct activities uh, with the local government units in the private sectors trying to devise some plan to improve or update some plans. So even in the community, the rural areas, they go to the field. This one, an example of our practice in the Hulbats uh, with the local government unit partners in uh, development. So lessons learned. So actually, the community is a learning field, and we know that we can uh, learn more if we are really immersed in the communities. Uh, unlike, uh, although theories and principles are being explained in classrooms, but we need to really learn. And uh, the best way to learn is having a field community, a field work uh, in the different communities. So what's next for human equality in the Philippines and Southeast Asia? So in the face of ASEAN integration, which is, we, we are all familiar with, human equality institutions should find the roles in trying to help find a common agenda of action that is a unified ASEAN human ecology in terms of teaching, research, practice, inter-institutional exchanges, collaborative research and publication, and then institutionalized ASEAN, Asian Coalition in Human Ecology, or the Asia. And we are trying to start this with the University of Kutra Malaysia and the Institute of Virginia, Bogor, where we will 
we are trying to have a consortium starting with the three different institutions. So also the mainstreaming of sustainable development goes into human ecology curriculum, research and extension programs. So we have started this and we are trying to uh, put more substance in this uh, in our courses in relation to the so-called sustainable development goals or previously the millennium development goals. And we have addressed this as uh, about seven of these SDGs under our program. That is uh, second is zero hunger, uh, the SDG goal number two is zero hunger. So end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Uh, SDG 3, which is about good health and well-being, we have to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Uh, SDG 4, which is about quality education, we have to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And then uh, SDG 5, about the gender equality, uh, we have to achieve great gender equality and empower all women and girls. SDG 11 about sustainable cities and communities we have to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. SDG 13, that's about climate action. We have to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. And then SDG 16 about the peace, justice, and strong institutions. We have to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development and provide access to justice for all and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. So, third, what's next for human ecology? Development of a graduate program in human ecology that will reflect transdisciplinarity that will help further improve theory and method building in human ecology in Southeast Asia and in the Philippines. So, we are in the process of trying uh, formulating a, a master's degree program related to human ecology, uh, most partic particularly environmental planning and design. And also, there is a need for sustained professionalization and promotion of human ecology through professional organizations and alumni associations. And this is one thing that we are trying to uh, really uh, uh, give some uh, effort, uh, just like uh, we have uh, the alumni, aside from the Alumni Association of Human Ecology, we have the Human Ecology Institute formed by uh, the different uh, graduates or the alumni of the College of Human Ecology under the degree program of BS Human Ecology and also uh, some other organizations uh, trying to uh, promote the Human Ecology uh, 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 area of study. Now, this uh, also has to strengthen policy advocacy role for a just and sustainable human ecological system through collaborative research, communication, and advocacy. Not only within uh, the country, but also we have to develop this within the ASEAN region and maybe in the whole of Asia. So, in conclusion, sustainable development cannot be attained without proper and value driven type of education. Sustainable education requires individual to understand about interdependence and interconnections between human beings and the environment, which is the focus of human ecology. As courses at the university or colleges did integrate environmental, social, and economic issues in this coursework, and the incorporation of these three elements of sustainable development can enhance the process of learning to be more relevant in the real life of the individual and the community. And this effort should be taken or undertaken in both the context and its pedagogy. Uh, this is a, the group uh, who attended, the Philippine delegation who attended the uh, Santa Ana, California 21st Human Ecology, uh, Society for Human Ecology Conference. So we did uh, former deans and in some faculty members and we have about two students with us who presented also to me. So in Lama Bo, Marami Salamat. Thank you very much.
in the area. Um, during my time, that was a long time ago, uh, one of the common comments about human ecology was that it was too much of a generalist, yes. and that you did not really know what to do after graduation. So I see quite a number of changes that has probably addressed that, but I would still wonder what is the you mentioned that graduates are hired by LGUs, by NGOs, and all these things. But what is the biggest percentage? Where do the graduates go? What is the biggest percentage of the graduates who go, for example, to, I don't know where, but where do they go now? So that's one question. I have another. Actually, I have quite a number because it has, this has been an eye opener for me. Yes. It's been ages since, well, I've been involved in human echo things. But another one is you say that we try, we're trying to have a, a consortium of sorts with the, with IP, the IPD, UPM, and human power to be up here. Do we? What exactly are the differences among the three organizations, among the three uh, universities, among the courses offered by the three universities? And I know that Japan has one, it's quite yes. popular, but I think it's also very different from what we have. Would you happen to know the big differences among all the offerings of these universities? More to come. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, the first question, uh, where do our graduates go? Well, mostly of them, most of them actually uh, they go to the local government units, especially our major field, the most certain uh, plant majors, uh, working uh, as a plant, especially now that uh, there is now a, a law that will require all the planning uh, officers of different LGUs to be board masters that in terms of environmental planning for exam. So now grad, uh, graduates of the BSC Manicology under the Human Services Planning now are uh, getting, are uh, getting into that. They are trying to uh, take the environmental planning for exam and they are uh, doing well. In fact, uh, in the last board exam, last, uh, I think uh, about 9 out of 10, the BSC Manicology HSP majors only, uh, na, uh, they passed the board exam. So and, uh, a lot of them took uh, this uh, license for exam. And uh, we are now going to that kind of thing. Now, we have also graduates who have got, uh, aside from the planning profession, we have some uh, director, uh, we have a NEDA Region 5 uh, director now. Uh, 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 so to be attorney, but uh, Agnes, Agnes Espinas, now a NEDA Region 5 uh, director formerly uh, from Region 4A, which is Calabarzon. Now also we have uh, the IAG director for Region 1. The, uh, also an award in uh, this coming loyalty day. So most of them, now some uh, ST majors, social technology majors, are going into the non-government organizations. Even uh, some uh, corporations like PNOC, Shell, etc., etc. And then about the human and family development majors, they're going into teaching uh, preschool education. Some of them have established their uh, own school, preschool, in their own uh, localities. Now, the second question is about uh, what difference we have. Uh, because we're trying to have a consortium with the University of Putra, Malaysia, and Institute of Bertani, Fogor. Actually, there's no much difference because uh, from uh, what I gathered when I was there last month, Special Institute for Tanya Bogor, their program was patterned after the Cupidus Manos College of Human Equality. Even the name of their department is almost similar to the college because most of our alumni, the graduates, are especially they must MPS and also the some intelligence scholars under the Circa Auspice, I think. Uh, they established the, after the, it's not the college, the faculty of human equality. They have nutrition, they have uh, environmental planning, they have this uh, related community development. So they, they were part of uh, I'm not so sure about the University of Malaysia, but uh, relatively they are young, younger than us because we, have, we, had, uh, we were the first one to offer the PhD degree program. So 
not nothing, but in Japan I'm not familiar, but some human ecology in Belgium, uh, they emanated from the health, uh, from the medical profession. But the one in the US, Michigan, I think it's different from the home technology. Also they emanated from home technology. Uh, Vietnam is trying to develop also the human ecology, their human ecology. Japan, I, I'm not so sure about the Japan, but uh, come uh, January, we'll be having a pre conference. So, we have invited a lot of the top of Chiyo Watanabe of uh, one university in Tokyo. So, they will be coming along with some uh, uh, human ecology uh, trees like Dr. Saise and also the, uh, some other from uh, Michigan, also an arbor. Uh, from the U.S. and also from the German Society for Human Ecology. So we'll have a big international conference uh, November 27. So hopefully, not only the consortium, but will the, it will be a, the consortium will join. Maybe we can have the Asia Society for Human Ecology, which can join the Society for Human Ecology International, together with the German Society.
I think during, I think, because I can't remember anymore, during our time, it was really uh, a group of like, some people were from uh, environmental yeah, planning, yeah. planning and analysis, some were from nutrition, some were from the other, from, from HFPS. So I do not know if it's still the same thing today, no more. She's doing this, okay. <laughs> so hindi na. Yeah, and then, uh, uh, that was before. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when it, uh, the difference is that uh, before, all the major uh, students under Yuma Settlements, before, uh, Yuma Settlements now is Yuma Settlements Planning uh, from uh, Minister of Yuma Settlements, but we don't cater the Minister of Yuma Settlements. Uh, uh, so, uh, from the Family Development Major, from the Social Tech, and the Yuma Settlements Major before, all uh, the students, the graduating students, are being filled as one group. So there are some contributions of different uh, area of specialization in the kind of the study in the field. But uh, actually, uh, when the program uh, really uh, uh, went into uh, some uh, revisions, we tried to focus more on the area, the area of specialization per department, like the settlement planning. So we talk about uh, helping the NGOs uh, trying to come up with the land, comprehensive life plan, comprehensive development plans. Now the social, social technology majors, they are into the non-government organizations, some private organizations in terms of community development. While the human and family development studies, there are some sort of, uh, their field practice is different. Uh, some, sort of, some are uh, in some preschool, I think, uh, uh, trying to uh, let's say be acquainted with what is in the preschool curriculum. So eventually, they, uh, most of them they become uh, actually, uh, teachers preschool. They uh, form their own institu uh, educational institution preschool. So, but now uh, that's uh, the uh, difference in that now. But some uh, alumni are trying to uh, bring back that old system, trying to be holistic. Although. Uh, different majors who have different field practice, but the, idea, the whole idea is also holistic. Because all the students under the basic Manicology program are all exposed under the different courses from the different departments, especially the core courses. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, but uh, we are not yet on that area uh, trying to again merge the different majors into one practical side.
Pero recently, uh, I was hired sa CHH, okay. sa researcher. And Just signed your papers this morning. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sir. Uh, actually, it's a good orientation for me because previously, I didn't know, yeah. actually, I didn't know much about uh, human ecology. I, my undergrad is from ano, uh, Liman, Public Administration and, and, and MS Environmental Science. So, talaga walang, walang alam. So, my question would be, uh, uh, you mentioned on the what's next on human ecology. Uh, and you mentioned uh, further integration on both theory and uh, uh, methods. And we also know, but we also know that uh, you know, theories and methods are shared across the, uh, in, with different disciplines. Yes. Environmental science, in community development. Uh, so you presented this paper in California. You encountered various strands of human ecology. Yeah. Uh, have you encountered any parang unique, uh, uh, any theories or methods or even parang body ng mga ano na uh, that you can say uniquely uh, it's from human ecology? And I ask that because. Uh, before this case, sir, I, I, I was a researcher since my undergraduate days. So I, I'd like to see if there are opportunities for research. Yes. If there are, uh, what can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of opportunities awaiting you. <laughs> and you'll be challenged actually uh, to do, engage in this kind of research. Actually, do actual research. Especially uh, when we have uh, the local government units. Just like that, we are uh, trying to help the municipality of Cuenca, uh, Batangas, trying to develop their, uh, to update or uh, have their new uh, comprehensive land plan. It's not only a public service, but uh, actually a national research for that matter. And uh, all the, one thing that is unique about human ecology in terms of the degree program is that the field practical. And we can uh, be proud of this field practical because not only because we have uh, 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 introduce and expose the students to the real, real situation in the community, but also we develop partners with uh, local government units and some non government organizations. A lot of research will be uh, really, uh, uh, you'll be challenged actually. So, the moment your uh, appointment paper is signed with the chancellor, you will be stuck. You will start. Okay. Actually, you know, I'll speak about it. During the demo teaching, uh, two weeks ago, the demo teaching. So, luckily, among the five applicants, he was selected. So, he was the only one who was able to get the best stretch in recommending a UK releasing.